Yeah, Trey, uh, I don't know how much you were paying attention, but two years ago there was a there was a game, Michigan won at the President Center, it was obviously before you were here, but do you remember that game and how much, I assume in the off season at least you heard the guys talking about it, Stu and Zach. Yeah, I remember watching the game and um, you know, just seeing how happy the guys were after they won. Um, you know, everyone knows the Breslin Center is, you know, one of the you know, top environments and top arenas in the country. So, um, I, I wasn't at the game, but I definitely remember it. You know, the guys were excited about it. Does it matter at all to you that this game has gone, gone beyond the state just in terms of people being interested, two top ten teams, you know, Big Ten title implications on the line? Uh, well, definitely, um, because, like you said, it's, it's the Big Ten title on the line, you know, two top ten teams going at it, and, you know, Michigan and Michigan State being one of the, you know, biggest rivalries in college basketball. You know, we're definitely going to go in there and try to do what we can do to win the game. Um, you know, we know that they're a really good team, and a really good team um, at home. So, you know, we're just going to go in there and try to do what we need to do, execute, you know, on both ends of the court, and, you know, try to come out with a win. On your right, Nick. Trey, last time, last time you guys played over there last year, uh, they did a good job taking you and Tim away. Uh, what do you remember about that game? Do you remember that game and what sticks out? Uh, yeah, they just do a good job of um, hard hedging the ball screens off the pick and roll action. So um, I think we'll watch film on that today and um, you know just try to make adjustments and you know try to try to find ways to you know beat them you know other than pick and roll actions and things like that. And, and I think our biggest thing is just getting out in transition. I think we're, we're, we're best when we, you know, get defensive rebounds and get out in transition. I think that opens up the flow of the half-court offense. On your left, John. You seem to do a pretty good job of shutting out opposing crowds. Uh, is this one of the tougher places to, to do that because of, you know, their feelings toward Michigan? Uh, definitely. Um, you know, we know that as soon as we got the bus, you know, we're going to be getting, you know, a lot of stuff and, you know, people are going to be talking a lot of trash. but. We're, that's not what we're there for. We're there to get a win. You know, we're going going to East Lansing. It's a business trip. So, like I said, we're just gonna go out there and play the way we know how to play. Uh, you know, try to tune out the crowd. You know, those gonna be hard. We have played in um, a couple of tough environments this year, so we're pretty much used to it. Colleen, right in the middle. You said you want to get more than just a pick and roll mm -hmm. done up in East Lansing. How are you gonna get Glenn and Nick back involved in the offense? Uh, I think it starts in transition. Um, you know, we, we, we definitely have plays for them in the, off, in the half court offense, but I think their game opens up, you know, not only on the offensive court, but on the defensive court when we get out in transition and get them easy buckets and get out in transition and get, you know, Nick some, some open looks from the three point line. Um, you know, that, they're, they're freshmen, they're young, but, you know, they're continuing to get better and grow from each and every game. So, you know, I'm sure that they're ready to play. On your left, Michael. Is there a party that likes when opposing crowds trash talk you, though? Is there any part of either? Mm. Well, what is it about that that you like, and also kind of what's I guess what's the is there something that I guess you can say that still sticks out from that you've heard? Well, it's just um, it's just the fact that you know we know that everyone there is against mm -hmm. us, and um, I think we kind of step up to that challenge every time we go to go to a tough environment. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you hear you hear the fans, you know, talking crazy to you. So I think that kind of motivates all of us to play hard and, um, and I think it, it, it's definitely better when you come out you know of an environment like that with a win you know kind of quiets them down so you know like I said we're just gonna go out there and try to do what we can to do to keep the crowd you know under control and stop them from as many runs as they are capable of making. Back to Glenn and uh, Nick a little bit you and Tim have kind of shouldered the load last couple games uh, scoring and otherwise uh, how, how important is it for one of those guys and not both to be a third scorer, especially in a situation like this, and do you challenge them? Do you or Tim say anything to these guys before a game? Like well, it, well, it's definitely important because you know when our three and our four men is um, you know contributing, you know at a high level that we know they can contribute at. You know, we're we're a totally different team, so you know me, me and Tim, we just try to talk to them and just continue to give them confidence. Um, I don't think fatigue plays a part in it, um, and I'm sure that they're not used to this type of schedule or type of season, but. You know, we just do our best to just continue to give them confidence. And um, we see them play every day, and, you know, we know what they can do. So, you know, we just keep, you know, stay patient with them and, you know, keep trusting them. Is it something where fatigue can't play a part in this? If, even if they are tired, you have to tell them, like, this, this can't, that yeah, can't be a reason? Yeah, definitely. Um, even if they are tired, um, we, we just tell them, no, we, you know, we got, we got more games left. We've got some big games coming up. So, 
You know, at the beginning of the year, we were talking about, you know, trying to win a Big Ten championship. You know, if we're trying to do that, then, you know, these next couple of games are really important. You know, we're going to need their, you know, their, their offensive abilities, and um, we're going to need them to contribute at a higher level. But I'm sure that they're capable of doing that. Um, it's not like they're, they're, they're on a drought or anything like that. It's just that, you know, they, they had a couple games where um, in the beginning of the year, you know, people were seeing them play at their highest level and when they don't have as good as games as they were at the beginning of the year. They were kind of looking like, what's going on? So, you know, we're staying patient with them. We're just continuing to, you know, give them confidence and you know, boost, boost their egos. Take one more. It, is it a point where you notice that you're missing Jordan now, that it's been, what, three, four games now, and the things that he does, Coach talks about how each of the bigs does a different thing, but with Jordan's specialty being defense and maybe on pick and roll, that you notice that that's missing from the offense now? Uh, yeah, we notice, we notice um, his presence missing, um, but Mitch and John have been doing a, you know, a, phenomenal, a phenomenal job just coming in and um, giving us what they got on the offensive end. Uh, Mitch brings a, a a jump shot that you know we've been missing, like an eight-foot jump shot that we've been missing, um, you know, to to the lineup. So, you know, it, it's good and bad at the same time. It's bad because Jamo is, you know, he's one of our best defensive players, and the best rebounders. And, you know, he's kind of a voice out there, you know, um, out there on the court with us. So, with his absence, it, we definitely miss his presence. But you know, I'm sure he'll be back in no time. Thank you, Trey.